Father Sasai? Yes, Mr. Joshi. Abeta Das, please, uh, can I have the permission to start? Please start. Yes, Mr. Joshi. Come on. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, principals, teachers, and my dear students, the learners of 21st century. Lot of confusion is always there. Which career to take, what to do after class 12. And we are thankful to Dr. Amrita Das for conducting this uh, webinar in two sessions for class 9 and 10 and for class 11 and 12 for our students of Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand region studying in ICSC affiliated schools. And uh, we are also thankful to Pooja, Ahuja ma'am for assisting Dr. Amrita Das. And uh, of course, uh, our nice and dynamic executive committee members team who are always there to support and help in all occasions. And it's like a family team. So thank you everyone. And I would request uh, Dr. Zareen F. Rizvi, our zone coordinator for Allahabad zone to please uh, welcome everyone officially. Over to you, Dr. Rizvi. Thank you, sir. Albert Einstein said, never regard study as a duty, but as the enviable opportunity to learn. A very hearty good morning to all present here. We have all gathered here virtually for the second day of career counseling and stress management webinar organized by the ASISC of ICSC and IC schools, UP, and Uttarakhand. The very purpose of this webinar is to help students as well as educationists understand the career opportunities that they have and how to pursue them. On behalf of all the executive committee members of the ASISC, UP and Uttarakhand region, I welcome Dr. Amrita Dar, the resource person for today's program. She is the founder and director of ICS, an affable personality with a charismatic aura. Dr. Das is a leading educationist and career consultant of the country. Her works and attributes will be introduced to you by Ms. Vanita Marotha, the Joint Secretary of the Association. Dear Dr. Amrita Das, I welcome you to this webinar as the resource person. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. I also welcome the office bearers of the Association of Schools for UP and UK. And today in the panel, we have Father Susai Raj, resident of the association, Ms. Kalpana Singh, vice president and coordinator of Lucknow Zone A, Mr. Sudhir Joshi, the dynamic personality there, secretary of the association, Ms. Vanita Merotra, Joint Secretary and Coordinator, Kanpur North. Father Shinoj, the Sports Coordinator and Coordinator, Ghaziabad Zone. Father Biju, Coordinator, Merit Zone. Father Andrew, Coordinator, Agra Zone. Father C.B. Joseph, Coordinator, Gorakhpur Zone. Mr. Nitin Williams, Coordinator, Jhansi Zone. Mr. Jim Thomas, Coordinator, Bareilly Zone. Ms. Sasha Singh, Coordinator Lucknow Zone B, and Father Melvin Wilson, Coordinator Kanpur South. I once again welcome you all. On behalf of the association, I welcome all the principals, teachers, parents, and students. Ladies and gentlemen, and dear students, the very purpose of this association is to identify young minds, train them with proper guidance in order to create professionals as well as dutiful citizens of the nation. All this can only be accomplished when we support and appreciate each other's efforts to build a strong nation. And during this time of pandemic, this webinar 
is solely designed for the well-being of the students. And I hope you all will benefit from it. So once again, a very hearty welcome to all of you. God bless you and thank you. Over to you, Mr. Josh. Thank, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. And uh, we are thankful to Father Andrew, our zone coordinator of Agra Zone. He has been kind enough to prepare the prepare, prayer for today. And you all know we need in, to invoke God's blessing before we start any, any work. So thank you, Father. We thank you for your promise to be with us always and for your presence with us right now. Dear God, today we surrender our minds and hearts to you so that we will be able to listen to your plan for us in the silence of our hearts. Speak, dear Lord, your words of wisdom into our lives. Almighty God, we ask you to deepen our understanding, broaden our thinking, and transform our beings so that we can comprehend the webinar and gain lessons for life, inspire the thoughts, discussions, and ideas of the students, help them choose the right career which would make them self-reliant and useful for society and the country at large. We, in a special way, pray for the resource person, Dr. Amrita Das. May the good Lord fill her with his wisdom and knowledge so that she may continue to motivate and guide many more students, teachers, and parents. I also commend all managers, principals, staff and students attending this webinar to your care and protection. Enlighten them so that they may seek after knowledge and wisdom. We also pray for all the office bearers of ASISC, UP and UK, so that they will continue to play the roles of leaders and motivators. We make this prayer in your holy name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Father Andrew. And uh, now I would uh, request uh, Father Shinoj, our Zone Coordinator of Ghaziabad Zone and uh, Convener of the Sports Committee of ASISC UP UK to please 
share some information about association of isc schools uttar pradesh and uttarakhand region over to you father shinoz thank you sir the resource person of the day dr amrita das honorable president the roran father society vice president mrs kalpana singh secretary mr sudhir joshi joint secretary mrs vanita mehrotra executive Com committee members respected teachers dear parents and students good morning with an i made quiet by the power of harmony and the deep power of joy we see into the life of things says william wordsworth and here we have asisc up and uk taking it another commendable step braving the snarls of the virus to give the students of our schools what is needed the most at this time a proper guidance our association has been assisting and guiding members of the association at various levels regarding the policies of educational authorities curricular activities and so on from the very inception our association has been working very closely with the national association to bring the best to the management staff students and the parents of the member schools down through the years asc up and uk region has achieved a lot by making commendable contributions to the member schools to the students and to the society at large asc national sports and games and literary and cultural events bear testimony to the same the precise and meticulous conducting of the events caught the attention of the council and for the past few years it is the asisc association that conducts the council's sports and games and our region has hosted many national events and taken the students to sgfi and other similar national level certificates the following events are conducted in six categories athletics swimming basketball football cricket throw ball volleyball lawn tennis badminton table tennis taekwondo karate kabaddi skating yoga caroms and chess literary events like a quiz creative writing drawing and painting debate and declamation conducted up to the national level certainly help an aspiring students dream come true we are making use of the online platform to conduct the literary events this year if any of you likes to give wings to your imagination and your talent then grab a lorem get in touch with your principal without a delay the annual conferences conducted by your region excels everything else a vast number of world famous personalities have come down to share the dice with us mr kabir bedi dr devendra late sri swami agnivesh to name a few the heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight but they while their companions slept the toiling upward in the night continue to strive be a students and never give up i don't do i don't intend to steal your time you have much more to learn for you for your life in this upcoming session pay heed to every word spoken by a honorable resource person and build your life stone by stone and minute by minute thank you wish you all a fruitful session god bless you all thank you father shinoj thank you so much and uh, now i would request uh, ms vanita mehrotra to please introduce our distinguished speaker to the audience over to you vanita ma'am well good morning everyone a very warm welcome again on behalf of asisc to all the guests here especially to dr amrita das uh, well uh, the gathering today has students parents educationist so i think the word the name itself dr amrita das needs no introduction she is an authority on education a very very renowned educationist and a career consultant i remember my association with dr amrita das it goes back 20 years 
when my nephew was in class 10. You would not be remembering. This is phenomenal. <laughs> huh, wow. So you won't be remembering that. But uh, yes, I did visit your office with him as a parent. And believe me, we were all talking about engineering and he has to go to an IIT, this, that. But a word from you and he changed his dream. And today we are happy that he did change his dream and became a lawyer. So students and parents who are hearing me, let me tell you her word is a word from the Bible of education. She's a very, very multifaceted personality and she's been serving a number of, she's on the board of a number of prestigious schools and institutions. She, in fact, has been very recently appointed as a member of the steering committee for the implementation of the NEP 2020. And I can just say it is the best thing that the government of UP could have done. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Das, uh, students and parents, for your information, has been honored with TCS Women Achiever of the Year Award, and her biography was included in the Who's Who of the World in 2015. In fact, um, the more uh, I say, the less it is. And I'd just like to conclude that for her, it is very, very rightly said, that she is the trailblazer guiding the nation towards an enlightening destiny. And the only thing that I'll pray today is, ma'am, please continue doing it for years and years and years to come for our future generations. So a very, very warm welcome to Dr. Amrita Das. Thank Thanks, you so much for that phenomenal introduction. Thank you, Vanita, ma'am. And the moment we were Thank all you. waiting for over to you, Dr. Amrita Das. It's your stage now. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Esteemed Father Susairaj, Mrs. Kalpana Singh, Mr. Sudhir Joshi. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Sudhir Joshi, Ms. Vanita Mehrotra, Mr. Nitin Williams, all EC members and coordinators, respected principals, teachers, parents, and very dear students, on behalf of the Institute for Career Studies, I extend a hearty and warm welcome to each one of you. My grateful thanks to the ASIC for this tremendous honor of inviting me to be a resource person today. I'm delighted to be in your midst. We may be se separated by many hundreds of kilometers, but I'm confident that we are connected through our hearts and our minds. I would like to thank Father Andrew for that beautiful, uplifting prayer, which has put us in an elevated frame of mind today and I'm sure students that your sincere participation in the webinar will enable you to make informed decisions, bringing out the very best in you. All of us want you to be that star and this very dynamic association, ASISC, with tremendous leadership and the leadership in your schools is definitely preparing you to be that star in your field. We heard it in the report and we saw so many accomplishments. All these are stepping stones for your success today, tomorrow, and always. So thank you once again. Now, this webinar is going to be extra special for two reasons. One, many of you sent in your questions which have been beautifully collated. And throughout this webinar, I will be answering them. And I thank Father Melvin D'Souza for doing the needful of putting those questions together. Secondly, all of you undertook a survey to express your views 
about how you're going to take future decisions. And once again, thanks to the association, to the schools and each one of you for doing it so sincerely, because now the session will be so, so very focused, keeping in mind what you have responded. So I want to give you good news. Students, for each one of you, 2021 is your decade. It is this decade that you'll pass through the portals of your school, you will enter college and university, and you'll get your first job. And you're now embarking on a future which will definitely give you lots of opportunities, a future where because of the fast paced changes, there are many more opportunities, many more courses, careers, and newer campuses which have come up. So the opportunities before you are infinite. It's never been so good. And despite the setbacks, it's going to get better and better because it is through adversity that we also get opportunity. So I emphasize that a universe of opportunities await you and the world is your stage. The world is your launch pad. 85% of the specializations 10 years from now don't exist today. So the very big question is, how do I prepare for an unknown future where we don't know what the trends are going to be? Students, it's like a treasure hunt. We have to start tracking those trends from today. And as you track those trends, the path will be clear. From the Institute for Career Studies, we are doing a lot of futuristic surveys and that information and data will always be with you through our app, ICS Career GPS. I'm so glad many of you have downloaded this app, have undertaken the journey, and that so many of you have some clarity about what you want to do next. So it is very much like a journey. When you go to a city after a year, you find that the landscape has changed. There are newer areas you can visit, newer malls, cinema houses, playgrounds, and there are different flyovers, metros, shorter routes. It is the same with careers. Every day there are changes. There are new specializations, new courses, campuses, combinations of careers. And it is important therefore to reset your personal global positioning system ever so often and to fine tune the choices to your unique frequency. I request Father D'Souza to at this stage put up some questions which you sent regarding how to make the choices and I'll be happy to address them. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. We have uh, several questions and uh, we have the tough time to collate these questions. The first question that comes from uh, Prakar Bajpayee from Mercy Memorial School, Kanpur. How should a student decide his or her career? What should be the basic parameters and how to determine our own career and how to prepare for that? Uh, second question, similar on similar lines. We have Akriti Srivastava from Lucknow Public School asking, what are the best career courses after 12? How to know my interests? And then we have uh, the third question from Aditi Singh, UP Kirana, Kanpur. My career options are very, very interesting, but my interests are constantly changing. So therefore, I don't know which is the good career for me. So this change, I am unable to cope up with this change. Would you please uh, enlighten me to select the best career for my life. Thank you so much, Father D'Souza. We've got three amazing questions, which I'll answer through a slide and explain 
how you go about it. So the most important factor is that career decision is a process which involves three steps. These three steps are know yourself, inform yourself, and plan for yourself. So we'll take up each one of these through the slide presentation, which has been developed to respond to these queries. Pooja, can we go back to the slide, please? So when we talk about know yourself, I want to share a very interesting anecdote. A king was walking around in his palace at night and a guard did not recognize him because it was dark. So the guard stopped the king and said, stop, who are you? Where are you going? And as the king approached him, the guard saw it was his king and started apologizing. And the king said, no, you asked me two very good questions. I will give you 10 times the amount you're paid as a guard if you asked me these two questions every day of my life. Who are you? Where are you going? So who are you is about knowing your strengths, making the most of them, knowing what your weaknesses are, eliminating them, knowing the opportunities, knowing the threats or the stumbling blocks or the problems. Essentially, you have to recognize your aptitudes, your interests, your talents, and your aspirations. And we have exercises for these. And these exercises are there on our app, which you downloaded. So how do you go about then following up on it? I would like you to know that frequently asking yourself four questions, sit quietly, reflect, who am I? Where am I? Where do I want to be? How do I get there? You know, when you ask these questions, you will connect with your innermost self. And as you connect with your innermost self, you will understand what your true purpose in life is, what your true callings in life, all of us know it. But because we get so much pressure, so many ideas from different people that are essential aptitudes, interests, talents get sidelined. We start listening to others. There's a Sanskrit word called Swadharm. Swadharm is discovering your purpose in life. Now, if we do that and go along that way, we will be successful and happy. Most often, because of parental pressure, peer pressure, societal pressure, misconceptions, we follow others' advice we move away from what we want to do, from what we will excel in, and that's called paraidharm. Now, when that happens, you may get a job, you may earn well, but something is missing, and that's called santushti, true inner happiness and satisfaction. So the beginning of all wisdom is know yourself. That's the starting point. I want you to know it's a lifelong quest because as you journey in life, you'll acquire more knowledge, you'll get more exposure, experience. And as your inner universe changes, the outer universe will change and you've got to align the two. So for that, information is power. The right information at the right time will get you to the right opportunities. So presently, Find out about the latest trends regarding courses, campuses, careers. Explore, go off the atlas. Experiment, experience. You know, when Alice in Wonderland came to crossroads, she saw that every road led to a fascinating destination. And she was confused. So she said, which road should I take? A Cheshire cat sitting on the wall heard her and said, Alice, depends on where you want to go. 
Alice replied, I don't know where I want to go. So then the cat said, any road will take you there. Students, I want to tell you that today many roads will take you to your goal, many roads. But you have to think about which road will be the best for you. So keep that in mind. There are multiple pathways, but in your journey, in your opening up of your unique global positioning system, which will be the best one, that is what you need to look at. And then plan, plan for yourself. Focus on the right course at the right campus and prepare for future jobs. So to answer the questions on how do I know how do I prepare? This is the approach. Now, there was a very interesting question. I have so many interests. My interests keep changing. I'm confused. You know, confusion to a point is good because the moment you're confused, you should start researching and seeing, okay, let me find out more and let me see if it gels with me, if it resonates with me. Also, Having many interests is great, but you've got to prioritize. You can't do everything at the same time. So prioritize and then see where, where you should start. Manage your time for that. So what I say is that you don't have to have one career. You can have a career portfolio which will bring together different building blocks of your interests and your talents. So this is how you would find your dream job. And I would say dream jobs, because each one of you belong to Generation Z, born between 1995 and 2010. After 2010, we have Generation Alpha. So each one of you will have a minimum of five different careers. So continue to identify in your journey what you're great at, what gives you the best marks, where do you get awards, where do you get recognition and match it with what you love to do, what you enjoy doing. Now, when you bring the two together and they're not mutually exclusive, bring them together at the intersection, you'll find lots of careers which will be rewarding. What do we call rewarding? A career, that will give you recognition and remuneration. A career which will give you purpose and meaning in life, fulfillment, happiness. So where your talents and the world, needs of the world converge, lie your opportunity for success. And the needs of the world are continuously changing. And so are you. Your talents and interests are constantly developing. So don't hesitate to prepare and then shift tracks quickly where you have to shift tracks. When we were growing up, we were taught that a rolling stone gathers no moss. We entered a career and remained with it because there were limited opportunities. Today, a rolling stone gathers more moss. So you've got to hop, skip, jump, change tracks, but don't do it randomly. Think it through. Plan. So no inform and plan continuously. I heard wonderful things about all your talent in the report recently. And students, I want you to know that you can be that star today. You can start your journey of being a star today. And that is the power of now. You have so many opportunities in school. You've got amazing platforms. We didn't have as many competitions and events as you have today. And they're so beautifully organized. You have access to great speakers. You talk to people who are experts in their field. So that is the power of now. So here on the screen, you see people like Samaira, who at a young age became a coder, Avantika, who developed an app, Aditi Singh, very recently got 22 lakhs from Microsoft. She is what we call a big bug bounty hunter, a big bug bounty hunter. And what was this big bug? The big bug was a 
fault in Microsoft's program, which she identified and informed them. She didn't take up any formal course. She learned cybersecurity on her own through Coursera, through the programs of IIT, which are free, and look where she got to. Saira Rose became a young author. Anand Krishna started a school for less privileged kids, and Samay Godika was a young scientist who won 2.9 crore rupees for showcasing a very interesting analysis about our body rhythm called circadian rhythm. So students, each one of you can be that star today, the writer, the, the let us say scientist, inventor, entrepreneur, teacher, dancer, musician, filmmaker, sports person, start that journey today. You have the opportunity and that's going to give you the competitive edge. That's what's going to give you a huge sense of satisfaction. So what I want you to know students today is maximum careers await you from any subject stream or combination. This is just so phenomenal. We had limited choices and in our time, it was more like a linear equation. Physics, chemistry, math equals engineering. Physics, chemistry, biology equals medicine. Commerce equals management. Accountancy equals chartered accountancy or cost and management accountancy. And humanities, big question mark. So much so, that students stopped taking humanities and because there was no demand, the school stopped offering it. So the quest is bring back the humanities, take up the humanities. If humanities will bring out the best in you, if humanities will develop your mind and your personality because maximum careers can be accessed from all subject streams. I'll give you one interesting example. Mrs. Arundhati Bhattacharji, who recently retired as the chairperson of the State Bank of India, did not study economics, did not study management. She did her BA in English and history, and she did her master's in English. She appeared for the banking services exam because she was interested, she got in, and once students get in from different combinations, the organization trains you in that career. So please remember this fact. It's very, very important as you make your future choices. So now what we'll do is that we'll share the eligibility criteria and then open it up for more questions. For those of you who have physics, chemistry, math, you're eligible to appear for engineering architecture, pharmacy in engineering institutions, merchant navy, and biotechnology. Now the latest breaking news is that many institutions are now accepting students with physics, chemistry, biology without math. But you'll have to do math as a foundation course when you join. For Air Force, Navy, and civil aviation, that is commercial flying, you need just physics and math. Now, supposing you have math and you're in grade 12 and you've decided that you would like to go in for civil aviation or you'd like to join Air Force and Navy, you can do physics from the open school. So there are subjects which you can pick up from the open school to complete the eligibility. It is accepted. For economic honors and computer applications, BCom honors in most good universities in India and abroad, you need to have math. So if you don't have math, again, you can do math from the open school. Many students do it. I'll give you an example, a very, very interesting example, that there was a student at Vellum Girls School who was very keen to do her management at the famous Horton Business School, so BBA from Horton. She didn't take math because though she was good at it, she had a command over it, 
she would lose marks for careless mistakes and she didn't want to compromise her board marks. So she took up subjects like economics, psychology, geography, and she did math from the open school. She did well and she went to Horton. So you need to have an eligibility and it should be an authentic source like the national, the open school and IOS, or if you're going abroad, there's something called advanced placement, AP. Then you do AP math or AP stats or AP physics. So that's another possibility. Medical field, veterinary science, pharmacy in other institutions, you need physics, chemistry and biology. But another development for computer applications, many institutes are accepting students who did not have math, but did computers. So keep this eligibility chart in mind, take a screenshot, and we now open up for more questions for you. Yes, ma'am. We have several questions uh, in this matter. Uh, we have uh, Yeshi from St. Joseph's Convent School, Varanasi. I want to pursue the field of aeronautics as my career. I'm interested in uh, space research. If I do not get qualified in uh, IITs, is it uh, okay to take admission in private colleges? Another question we have from uh, Mohakshi Chitransh from uh, Lucknow. What are the co courses uh, one can pursue after 12 to become an Air Force pilot? Riya Singh from Bareilly. I love to study physics, so I want to become an astrophysicist. What courses uh, shall I take to pursue my career? We have from uh, Saurabh from uh, Kanpur. I want to, I'm interested in uh, automobile industry. I want to design cars. What subjects uh, shall I take? We have uh, Aditi from Kanpur. Can I do BCA if I haven't opted for computer science uh, in class 12? If yes, then uh, will I have to do a computer course or can I directly join a BCA? We have uh, Prema Singh from Kanpur. Is biology, mathematics a good choice for the students who like both and uh, thinking of your future in uh, bioengineering? What is the scope of bioengineering, biomedical engineering, and what is uh, what are course uh, subjects shall be take uh, to pursue this uh, career? We have Sartak from Lucknow asking an interesting question: What courses shall I do to become a blockchain developer? Samridhi Yadav from uh, Varanasi have taken up a PCB. I want to join civil services, but there are high chances of uh, my failure in a civil services ex entrance exam. I want to have a backup uh, plan. What should be my backup plan? So we'll start with these, continue and then take some more. Thank you so yes. much, Father, for these. So the first question I had was about wanting to do aeronautics and uh, becoming a space researcher or scientist and wanted to know if not IITs, what about other institutions? So for engineering, you have to have physics, chemistry, math. Beyond IITs, you have the National Institutes of Technology and you have many other very, very good engineering places like the Punjab Engineering College, then you have what used to be called the Delhi College of Engineering, that university now, Delhi University of Engineering. So there are many places we can go to among the private ones also. There are some top-notch ones. They may be a little more expensive, but they're very, very good. So if you look at the private ones, which are doing extremely well, they are the Manipal Institute of Technology, Velour Institute of Technology, you have uh, Shivnadar Institute in University, Bennett University, 
and Jindal University. So there are many, many possibilities. Our app will give you a big list. And at this day, students, I want you to know that there are more seats than students in quality institutions. So it has to be the right course at the right campus. Have an idea of where you want to go and follow through the eligibility requirements and the examinations of all of these. Now, Birla Institute of Technology and Science, again, is excellent. It's private, but it's among the best. So you have BITS, Pilani, Goa, and you have Hyderabad. But I would also request you to look at BITS Dubai. It is a fantastic campus, not very expensive. And presently, the Dubai Expo is happening. It's a world expo and the kind of global opportunities you'll get are phenomenal. Having said this, all students must pick up relevant courses online. They'll help you to be future ready. And a lot of wonderful online courses are available through Coursera, Udemy, and universities are giving them. So famous Massachusetts Institute of Technology in US has open courseware. So do the IITs avail of this amazing opportunities to pick it up. Now, to become a pilot, you have to have physics and math, but you need to actually also see whether you have the physical fitness as well to be a pilot. So there's a pilot aptitude test, which looks at how you would respond under certain conditions, air pressure, and so on. So pilot aptitude is very, test is very, very important. The route to becoming a pilot is that you have to do a student pilot license, private pilot's license, and then you get a commercial pilot license after 240 hours of flying. The best place for this is the Indra Gandhi Rashtriya Oran Academy in Rai Bareli, which has, uh, I would say, the status of a university now. There are many more flying schools, but they must be recognized by the requisite authority. So the authority recognition for flying must be there from wherever you do it. You know? So that's part of civil aviation. Uh, regarding astrophysics, you need to have physics. So physics, chemistry, math would be a great option for you, or even physics, chemistry, biology to go ahead with astrophysics. Space is a big sector which has opened up today for you. So with the opening up of the space sector, there's a lot of scope for people who study physics or astrophysics. And courses in physics are available in all universities. Automobile design. So what subject should you have for automobile design? There are two routes. One, an engineering route, and the other from any subject. So if you're going through the engineering route, you could do, for example, industrial design. Most institutions will require you to have physics and math or physics, chemistry, and math. But you can also go for product design. And product design is open for anybody. National Institute of Design is one top institution in India where you can do product design. So also Shishti. For bachelors in computer application, as I said, doesn't matter if you don't have computers. In fact, for any computer course, it's not necessary for you to have computers or computer science, even for engineering courses. For engineering courses, you need physics, chemistry, math. But for computer applications, if you don't have computers, you should have mathematics. So if you haven't taken up math, take it up from the open school. For biomedical engineering, you can go for physics, chemistry, math. But if you have physics, chemistry, math, biology, it's perhaps the best option, but it's really tough. Only do it if you can manage all four. Otherwise, PCM will take you to both biomedical engineering or um, 
medical engineering, biomedical sciences, you can go with physics, chemistry, and math. The next one was blockchain development. Ideally, you should take up computer science. So take up your engineering in computer science for blockchain. But as I said, even non-engineering students can pick this up from courses and join top companies like Microsoft and Google. They don't look for specific degrees. They look for competency. They look for command over the subject and efficiency with that subject. Now for civil services, you can go from all subject combinations, take up the subjects you're best at. So the student asked about PCB, fine. After PCB, do your undergraduation in a subject that you are best at. Because in civil services, there are three stages, preliminary, mains, and interview. Preliminaries does not have any subject. There's general studies, and general mental ability, something like the SAT exam. So you have to prepare for general knowledge and current affairs and start that preparation from now. A lot of questions come from what you studied in 10th, 11th and 12th. In the next stage, once you pass prelims, you have the main exam. Presently for the main exam, there's general study, one subject, an essay paper, English and Hindi. So that one subject that you take up should be a subject where you have a proven track record of excellence. So take that subject after very careful thought and start looking at what type of questions come from that subject. Civil services is a competitive exam. You need to have a fallback option, a safety net. Most of you will be 20, going on to 21 when you pass out of college, minimum age requirement for civil services is 21. Therefore, while preparing for civil services, pick up a professional course that will be the best fallback for you. It could be law, it could be journalism, it could be management, engineering, a master's specialization in a subject that you love, anything that will give you a career of your choice other than the civil services. So plan B is a must. We now continue, Puja, with the presentation, and then we'll stop and take more questions. So students, to continue with what I said, after class 12, you'll have multiple pathways. For those of you, who are great at academics, you should go for the subject of your choice, a BA, BSc, BCom. But those who do not have a great academic interest or passion, and in, for those who are going for engineering in medicine, you have to start with a professional course straight after plus two. So the professional courses available to you are Bachelors of Technology or Engineering, it means the same thing. MBBS, that is a medical pathway, or paramedical courses like optometry, audiology, speech therapy. BBA, Bachelors in Business Administration, Bachelors in Hotel Management, Bachelors in Media Studies, Bachelors in Social Work, Architecture, Defense Services, and for defense services, remember, for Air Force and Navy, you need physics and math, army from anywhere, art and design. So you can move for a professional if you don't have an academic interest. You can also go for combination of courses like a BA with English psychology and journalism or with performing arts, media studies, BA with B.Ed, B.Sc with B.Ed, B.A. plus LLB, B.Sc plus LLB, B.Com plus LLB, B.B.A. plus LLB. So there are these combination courses. Now I want to point out something. Supposing you're interested in law, but you also love a subject like economics or psychology or literature, 
don't straight away go for a five-year law course. Do your subject first, because that will give you a pathway for specialization and also keep law open if you want to go on for it later. So go for BA, BSc, BCom, and then do your LLB. But if you don't have that academic interest, then go for the combined course. And if you're very sure, because many students have got into it just because it was prestigious. They took the CLAT coaching, got in and realized, gosh, this is not me. What am I doing here? I would have been better off with psychology or design or with doing management or social work. And they then move out losing a lot of time. If you take the academic route, you have an option of specializations or you can straight away move into any other professional program like management, advertising, journalism, public relations, social work, law, filmmaking, design, hospitality, travel tourism at the master's level. And likewise, if you do professional courses, you have many more choices to continue with that professional course or branch off into something else, bringing in another building block. In addition to this, you have courses which are available online. Or if you have a talent, you have courses which are available to train that talent. For example, you want to do acting. So you can learn acting while you're studying a professional course of your choice. So this is an approach where it is important to really think about which would be the best and the strongest path for you. And we'll be happy to guide you in this journey along with the school. So now let's come to a list which shows you, in fact, a very interesting survey outcome, which I'd love to share with you now, because this has relevance to the questions you have asked. And thank you once again, students, for responding to it. And thank you to the association for conducting it so perfectly. So here, when it came to, what are you planning at the undergrad bachelor's level? We just took this issue up of academic, professional, and combination. And as per your projection, 60% are thinking of a professional course, 35% an academic course to bring in with, and 9% a combination. Students, I think you could rethink this because a biggest misconception in our society today is that after school, it's better to embark on a professional course. I would say we cannot generalize. It has to be customized to what will bring out the best in you, what will tap your potential, what will enable you to excel in the choice of your field. So do think about it and then decide which way you would like to go. Because this does show that many are looking at professional because you feel that will give you a head start. That's not true today. There are many pathways. So rethink this. How will you choose a course for undergraduate bachelor's education? Your answers were really full of wisdom. Very, very wise answers. I must congratulate you. The maximum will look at interest. And these are the ones that came as choices, which are brilliant choices. According to my interest, future job prospects, parents advice, international exposure. You're truly global students. You're thinking in a global way. International exposure is so important. Availability of scholarships, very, very pragmatic. And then it was about how much impact will each of these have on choosing your career? So that again, you would look at the quality of faculty, academic reputation, high grades, co-op programs, that is opportunities for internship. And I thought that again was absolutely outstanding. So congratulations students, your responses have been impressive. 
do rethink the first one about academic, professional, and combinations. That will be important. Now we move on to some professional courses, and I'll take questions in each one. So professional courses after plus two from all subject combinations. You can move into a law course through the CLAT exam and other exams. And as I told you, from all subject streams, you can do BALLB, BBALLB, and BCOM LLB. You can move into management. There are different terms used for management by different colleges. Some call it BBA, some call it Bachelors of Management Studies, others call it Bachelors of Business Studies. And you can move for mass communication, which is known as Bachelors of Mass Media. So you have journalism, advertising, filmmaking, new digital media, public relations. Father, if there are questions on these fields, I'll be happy to answer. Yeah, there are a few questions uh, on this field. Uh, there's one question uh, on a corporate law. What is the scope of corporate law in India? That is, uh, the question is asked by Ananya Agarwal from Lucknow. And then we have uh, one more question. Is event management a good career line? How to prepare after 11th to go into event management? We have one more question. Sumaya okay. Rashid from Badoi. Yes. I want to pursue my further studies in uh, fine arts. Kindly guide me. What are the universities that are good for fine arts? And there are several questions on CA. What are the best institutions or colleges for studying CA in India? Which courses benefit the most uh, doing CA? Uh, is uh, BCom honors a good choice for pursuing along with the study of CA? These are the few questions uh, on these subjects. All right, excellent. Thank you so much for putting them across so well. The first question was the future of corporate law. Students, I want you to know that each and every subject and each and every specialization has enormous future if you are great at it. You have to deliver excellence. And you can only deliver excellence if you've made the right choice, gone to the best institution for that, and you enjoy doing that work. These have to be very, very carefully thought through. So previously, there were limited options. Today, with the world your stage, there are unlimited, infinite opportunities. So if you're talking about corporate law, there's very good scope in corporate law as in any other specialization, but you have to have expertise deep command over the subject and build up the latest in it. Along with that, you have to have a logical mind, up-to-date information about the industry, about organizations, current trends, that's important. So there's a lot of scope in many, many specialized fields of law. You could look at any one of these, like civil law, criminal law, cyber law, genetics law. For cyber and genetics, you could have PCM or PCB, and we'll talk about that. And you have uh, corporate as one big area. Another emerging area is international civil law. Now, international civil law has picked up because of globalization. I'll give you an example. An Indian marries a person from France. And unfortunately, some years later, there's a divorce. The French laws will come into operation as well as the India laws. And we would have to see what kind of settlements can be made under the two different laws. So international civil law has become a very important area and also international corporate law we're looking at uh, multinationals and the rules and regulations. So a lot of scope in law and also students blogging in law. You can start blogging and you can start advising through your blogs and that has a lot of scope. Next one was about event management. 
event management does have scope, but it's important to have a strong backing of management with event management or of anything like corporate communication, public relations, along with event management. So what we recommend to students is that while you're doing your bachelor's, say in management or in the hospitality sector, which is also very good for event management, or in the field of media and public relations, take up event management as a diploma course alongside major cities offer it from what is called the International Institute of Event Management or the National Institute of Event Management. So do it alongside your major course in management, hospitality or media. It's very useful or any other thing. But don't just focus on event management after graduation. To get practice, do practical work, get practical exposure in event management, it'll be very useful. Now, fine art can be studied in a number of schools of art and universities across the country. The best one is the Delhi School of Art. It's excellent. And then you have the JJ School of Art. Then you have the School of Art in uh, Kolkata, in Chandigarh, Lucknow University. These are all absolutely outstanding. So you could be doing art, but a specialization which you should look at is digital art. Digital art will make you very relevant in the world of work today. You could do graphics alongside and applied art, animations. This will add value to your already strong creative talent. Chartered accountancy, where do I study it from? For chartered accountancy, you can go from any subject combination. However, it is important to start on the journey from class 11 onwards. You can register with the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India from 11 onwards and prepare for the first level of the test, the first level of the proficiency test that you will have, you can start that preparation, register and start that preparation. Then ideally, go for BCom plus CA. There are students who've done economics plus CA, but BCom plus CA makes it easier because the courses are similar. An excellent course is offered by Christ. It's called BCom Professional. So along with BCom Professional, you can do Chartered Accountancy by enrolling, as I said, with the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. And in major cities, ICAI runs courses to prepare you for the different entrance exams and for the practical training, which is called articleship. Now, articleship is mandatory. So the rule for doing CA is that you cannot attend classes between say 11 and five, they have to be before that. So you have to go for a BCom course, which keeps in mind the fact that you're going to be doing chartered accountancy. Here, the BCom honors course in Delhi University is too demanding. Don't even think of it. Instead, think of courses like BCom at Bombay University. So you get to do your BCom, say, at okay, yeah. HR College of Commerce. And at the HR College of Commerce, you can do BCom at the early hours or late hours and alongside chartered accountancy. Similarly, many colleges in different cities of India give you BCom at a time which is early morning, late evening, so that you can do your CA in between. Do not do a dummy article ship. You will be disqualified. So these are some tips about CA and the three-year program. I feel I've answered all the questions presently. Yes, ma'am. Let's move ahead and we'll go for more. So 
other courses available to you from all subject combinations are social work, hotel, catering industry, culinary art, where straight away you can train to become a chef and become a master chef. Travel and tourism, bachelor's in travel administration is also there, art and design where you can do a bachelor's in design or bachelor's in fine art, which we just looked at. And within design, there are many more specializations today, like fashion, footwear, interior, accessory, product, jewelry, textile design, and so much more. We move from here. We look at chartered accountancy. I've talked about cost and management accountancy and company secretary are some other programs. So what I want you to know is that chartered accountancy requires a lot of focus. Very few students are able to pass. So it needs a huge amount of dedication. An alternative route is to do cost and management accountancy. So what is the difference between a CA and a CMA? A CA is the person who is authorized to audit the account by the government of India. So only a CA can audit the account. Cost and management accountants do all other works except audit. There's one other very interesting course available online. It's offered by a British organization and the course is called ACCA. All multinationals are accepting people with a background of ACCA. You can do it right after plus two with a PCOM or economics or BBA, and you will get good opportunities in multinationals and other companies, but the only thing is that you won't be able to audit accounts. So these are some wonderful possibilities for you and you can combine. Then BCOM is also open to you. BCOM accounting and finance, travel and tourism, banking and insurance, these are some wonderful combinations, financial markets. For this, you require your plus two with Ecomath. So you could have PCM with Ecomath. You could have history, political science, Ecomath. Uh, you could have psychology, geography, Ecomath. You can go for it. Or you should be from the commerce stream. Actuarial science is really trending now wherein you use mathematical calculations to predict profit and loss, future trends, and you can join the Actuarial Society of India, do an entrance exam, and start on the course of Actuarial Science alongside your bachelor's program. For Actuarial Science, you have to be super good at math. Math has to be your strength and math should be your subject. Then as I mentioned, from all subjects, you can go for defense as well. We will soon move to PCM and PCB. No, sorry, we move to humanity. So are there any questions related to what I've just covered or humanities father? Uh, so far, we have one more question that about uh, mass communication. What is the scope of mass communication in India today? Yes. Then we have another question uh, by Alicia from Varanasi. What is the scope of psychology in India? What are the good colleges uh, to do to pursue psychology today? Okay, so for mass communication, which means communicating to the masses, there's phenomenal scope because it has gone digital. So you have digital media today, whether it's a newspaper or you're looking at movies, for movies you have OTT platforms, over-the-top platforms, where many more people have an opportunity to showcase their talent in script writing, movie making, film editing, acting, and so on. So mass communication has grown to becoming a very, very popular and uh, trending field because of the digital aspect, the digitalization of mass media. So for mass media, you can do it right after plus two as a bachelor's of mass media course. A very good course is offered by Bombay University. It's called bachelor's in mass media. 
So you have it at Xavier's, HR, Jai Hind, Sophia. You also have mass media at Christ in Bangalore, Mount Carmel, Jyoti Nevas, St. Joseph's. Here, you have a combination of English psychology and journalism or English psychology and communication. Then Symbiosis has mass media. Delhi University gives you BA honors in journalism. Indra Prast for girls has a complete spectrum of bachelors of mass media and mass communication. So there are many opportunities for you to do it at the undergraduate level or later at the postgraduate level. Remember to look at the digital aspect, start writing today, start doing it from today. Psychology has become a very trending field specifically post COVID. There are many more people who need psychological counseling. So there's a huge demand for psychological counselors, clinical psychologists, school counselors, educational counselors, industry counselors, organizational behavior experts. So there's a big, big demand in India and globally. And you know something so very interesting? The demand for psychologists has grown in tech companies like Google, like Facebook, like Microsoft, Instagram. And the reason is that they want to humanize their robots and chatbots. So they're looking at people with a you know, expertise in psychology or humanities who have great language ability to humanize. So high tech before high touch used to be the dictum. Now it's high touch before high tech. High touch before high tech. So technology is looking at people to humanize it. And that is the beauty of it, which is leading to a huge demand. So 20% of employers in tech company are not people from engineering or computer science. They are from psychology and humanities. <coughs> so we now move on to the next aspect and then we take more questions. So if you go for humanities, if you do a bachelor's, you can specialize in creative and content writing. It's trending. In fact, you can do digital creative and content writing from today. You start earning mega bucks from today as a student. Journalism, linguistics, publishing, script writing, all very, very much in demand. If you take up geography, you can go for analyzing remote sensing data, cartography, economics geography, energy analysts, huge demand, environment and ecology, environmental management, see how many specializations and growing. In history, if you bring together math and history, you have clear dynamics, which enables you to forecast future trends, cultural resource management, digital history, economic history, international relations. Look at the number of combinations that you can have by way of specializations as well. Then in political science, a lot of specializations as well. And so also in, can we go to political science, please? International relations, policy analyst, political advisor, research analyst. In psychology, I already told you clinical behavioral is a very interesting field. If you study economics with psychology, or if you study commerce with psychology, you can specialize in behavioral economics, behavioral finance, because it is human behavior that is impacting market trends, forensic psychology, occupational psychology. I mean, it's just growing into more and more specialization. So you have a choice students, either that specialization or you can move on to any other field like management, law, media, social work, civil services, everything is open for you. Coming to physics, chemistry, biology, I'll cover this and take questions on this field. You go for medicine or dental sciences 
and that's through the NEET exam, which for which you really have to prepare well. So what I advise students is focus on the boards, what you're learning in school, and apply that through questions that come in the NEET exam. You can go for tuition, but don't neglect your board exams and the studies for that. And fortunately, all of you are going to have it much easier in terms of board exams in uh, different phases. So for example, if you're doing the circulatory system, take up questions which come in the NEET exam on the circulatory system. If you're studying about the kidney, take up every question, possible question that could come up on the kidney. Likewise, you have paramedical fields, which are very, very trending, wherein you can be an entrepreneur, set up your own paramedical specialist body. For, for this, you have physiotherapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy, audiology, optometry, and various medical technicians. If you love biology, you're keen on law, you can move out from the lab now, do a law course and do a BSc LLB in genetics, specialize in genetics or in medical legal law. And if you want to continue with science, you love the sciences, please go ahead with physics, chemistry, zoology, botany, biology, environmental sciences. There's a lot of scope for you. I'll give you the latest example of a student. She did very well in science in 10th. Her name is Shambhavi Pratap, Army Public School, Delhi. And like every other student, she joined FITCHI because everybody who does PCM joins FITCHI. Now, once she joined FITCHI, she realized that she didn't quite want to go for engineering. In fact, that was very far away from what she wanted to do. So she, can we go back, Pooja, please? So what she did was she uh, took up chemistry honors. She did chemistry honors and she did brilliantly in chemistry. She took it up after our advice. She got a research grant from the government to do chemistry research. And she researched with professors of IIT, Delhi. After that, she got the Erasmus scholarship, went to Germany, did her PhD in Germany, and she's just passed her PhD in Germany, and she's got a fantastic job with Tesla, in which Elon Musk interviewed her. And why he took her is that she specialized in sustainable energy, and his Tesla is going to look at sustainable energy. So her salary, taking the chemistry route, taking it up to a PhD level is going to be 1,50,000 US dollars per annum straight away. So even pursuing a field of science and specializing in it can give you a fantastic future career. Father, any questions on PCB? Yes, we have a few questions. We have Yeshi from Lucknow. I want to become a doctor, but I'm very soft hearted. Do you think I have made the right choice? People say that medical field is very costly. It requires a lot of money. My family is not so well financially. What shall I do regarding this? Another question we have regarding a zoology. I, Rohan from Kanpur, I have uh, chosen BioStream. I want, in future, I want to like to go in the field of zoology. Is there any scope for this uh, uh, career? These are the two questions. Excellent questions. So regarding the medical sciences, many people love biology and because they love biology, th they think of the medical sciences. Yes, you have to be tough to be able to be in the field because you will be during the course doing a lot of dissections as well on the human body. And you will also later practice surgery. So you have to give it a second thought 
And if it is something that is going to hamper your growth, think of an alternative. Look at a paramedical field. A paramedical field like optometry, dealing with eyes or audiology. Or look at something like bachelors in hotel, uh, hospital management. Bachelors in hospital management. Or even later, carry on with biology or do biotechnology or any other bio field of your choice, biochemistry, and then look at a master's in hospital management. It's one of the top 10 trending fields in the world, hospital management, health management. So that could be an ideal option or opportunity for you. For the student who wanted, yeah, regarding expense, yes, it is very, very expensive, particularly the private colleges, and then you go in for a master's, that again involves expense. Now for that expense, there are scholarships and there are bank loans, but you've got to be very sure that you want to go ahead. So look at the alternatives I suggested. Zoology, specializations in zoology, becoming a scientist in the field has great future. You also have a wonderful career in the Indian Forest Services, IFS, which is an important service of the government of India. So you could look at appearing for the Indian Forest Services. And I think that would give you immense joy and satisfaction. You can also look at doing forest management later from the National Institute of Forest Management, which is in Bhopal. And the moment you get into it, you get a scholarship. It's under the government of India. You could move for wildlife sciences, which again has a lot of scope. So there's a lot of possibilities from zoology. Go ahead and do it and realize your dreams. We'll now move to PCM related careers. Thank you, Pooja. So you have engineering, architecture, computer applications, BSc plus law, where you could do cyber law, and BSc in a number of subjects, defense services, Navy and Air Force require physics and math, commercial flying, and merchant Navy. Merchant Navy has two parts to it. One is the engineering part, marine engineering, and the other is nautical science, where you are in charge of taking the ship with your crew from point A to point B. There's a lot of scope for all of these, including scientific research, which is driving technology today. So if you love a subject, I again repeat, go for that subject and specialize in it. Are there any questions here? We already covered uh these questions earlier. All right. So yeah. we'll just go to the next one. Here are some major entrance exams that you have to keep in mind uh, for agriculture. For army, you can do your NDA after plus two, but there's another possibility of doing your combined defense services after graduation. So these are the two routes into the defense services. If you do NCCC certificate while you're in school and college, then you don't have to give the entrance exam. You just have to go for the service selection board. So for architecture, you have the JEE main exam as well as the national architecture test. For design, there are a number of tests which you'll find on our app as well under design, engineering, you know it's JEE main and advanced. Then for Karnatak, you have the Comet K. Now Karnatak has a lot of excellent institutions of engineering, so you must consider taking the Comet K. BITSAT is for the Birla Institute of Pilani, which has its branches in Hyderabad, Goa, and Dubai. For Dubai, you can go without BITSAT, just takes your marks. And then you have the Velour Institute of Technology, which has its exam. For hospitality, there's one all India exam conducted by the National Council of Hotel Management, and that's NCHM joint entrance exam. However, 
the Taj Hotel in Aurangabad and the Welcome Group in Manipal have their own exam. For law, we know about CLAT, but there's ILET and LSAT. Most of them are similar. So start your preparation from now by looking at the kind of questions that come. For medical, there's NEAT. And I want you to know, students, even if you're planning to do medical studies abroad, you will have to register, take NEAT, and then go abroad. For Merchant Navy, there's IMU CET exam. And for sciences, if you want to do a five-year course in science, there's IISER, ISA, NEST, KVPI, and of course, IIT JEE. So these are the various exams. If you want to go for the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, for the biological sciences, the NEAT results will be valid. So this gives you an example of the different All India exams. Get to know about them and practice well. We now move on to liberal arts. A lot of people ask, what is liberal arts? I want you to know, as I mentioned earlier, that humanities and psychology are shining in the age of artificial intelligence. I call it liberal education. Liberal arts is a wrong term, I feel. But it explains why it's there, because in Nalanda and Takshilla, they called all subjects kala. Kala means arts. So liberal arts enables you to choose across boundaries of natural, social sciences, humanities, and arts, rather than just taking a vocational, professional, or technical course. Now, they're all good. It depends on what works for you. What liberal arts do is they give you a wide-based knowledge of subjects with mastery over one or two give you higher order thinking skills and empathy, design thinking, creativity, and you get a lot of employability skills which are relevant across all organizations like excellent communication skills, teamwork, leadership, and so on. So don't hesitate to explore this field if you feel this is what will bring out your talent, tap your potential, and help you to excel in your chosen field. We now move to specialists in subjects. Again, I emphasize that in today's knowledge age, where knowledge commands a premium, any specialization is going to give you a lot of opportunities to be the scientist, to be the educationist, to be a consultant, and who knows, President of India. President Abdul Kalam was a scientist and he became President of India, but many scientists consult and they are part of many, many organizations. So every field is open for you from space to management fields, to education, to government. So just don't hesitate to go for it if this is what resonates with you. So very quickly, here are careers available from all subject streams, from any combination, but there will be digital transformations in each field, and you must keep track of the digital transformations. For example, in advertising and corporate communication, you have digital media, you have, you UI and UX, user experience, user interface for art and design, finance plus technology, fintech. So all of these fields will have that digital element and that's going to be trending in the future. Educational field is one of the biggest fields along with health, hospitality, insurance, law, mass comm, psychology, performing arts, social work, sports. If you love sports, you want to be in that arena, you could do sports psychology, sport medicine, sports journalism, sports management. And it is now becoming the era of digital sports. Formula One racing happened 
as an e-sports event. So everything is becoming e and digital, and that is what you have to embrace and excel in, keeping in mind the personal human touch. That's going to be always very, very important. Are there any questions on these careers, Father? Yes, we have a few questions on uh, yes. these careers. Yes. Uh, we have questions on uh, sports management. Smriti Mishra from Kanpur. Is yes. sports management a good career after 12? What is the scope uh, in this field? Uh, we have a question on uh, uh, cyber security already we have covered. I'm interested in ethical hacking, hacking and mm -hmm. cyber security, but I don't know uh, where should I go. That is asked by Adi Gupta from Lucknow. Yes. Uh, there's one more question. Divyan Sharma from uh, Lucknow. Ma'am, I'm very interested in gaming field. Could you please guide me about what courses to opt for and what are the career options uh, in this field? And then we have several questions on uh, artificial intelligence. Under yes. these uncertain times, how do we prepare ourselves mentally for future challenges? How exactly will our choices resonate with our future achievements? What is the future of uh, specialization in uh, artificial intelligence? What are the best colleges for uh, learning artificial intelligence? What a wonderful lot of questions throughout. I must commend the students and thank Father again for putting them together so well. So the first question that we had was about sports management. This is gradually becoming more and more an in-demand field, more so because of the digital element in it. A lot of it is getting digitized and you need many more people to look into the management of, of digital sports events. So a new course, which is going to come up very soon, some foreign universities have started it, is a BBA in e-sports management. So sports management is a good idea. India presently doesn't have great courses. So what I would recommend is if you're keen on sports management, you could join a BBA course in India and do the sports management online as a specialized one. Loughborough University in UK is the best in sports management in the world. And they were the first to start it. And every student gets a great job after that program. So go ahead with sports management, but have a wider platform to begin with of a BBA and Cap it with a specialization. Ice the cake with the specialization. The next question was on ethical hacking. Some excellent courses are available online. You can become a, an ethical hacker and an expert within six to six months to a year. But to actually get a deep understanding of it, ideally you should do your BTEC in computer science or BSc in computer science and specialize in cybersecurity and ethical hacking. That will be the best route. And that is available in all engineering colleges. Gaming field is trending. So you have game development and design. Game development and design requires people who would write the story for the game, the storyboard it's called. Those who do the creative part, the UI, UX of it, the animations of it, and those who will do the technology part of it. So there's a lot of scope for game development and design because apart from the field of leisure and entertainment, game development and design is very much regard, required for the educational field as well. Very much so in the educational field. So this is a great possibility and you can again study it as a specialization in an engineering course, go online, pick up the latest through online programs as well. Now, there's one other aspect to it called gaming. Gaming also has become a career, but it's like you're a specialist, but you're gambling because you can win or lose. But it is so exciting that a lot of students get completely hooked onto it. They get addicted. 
not only students, adults as well. Now, once you're addicted, your studies suffer. And for adults, their careers suffer. So please make sure that you are not addicted to gaming. And if you go into it later, you know how to play the game so that you're a winner and not a loser and manage your time there. So that is what I needed to say about gaming. For artificial intelligence, I want to emphasize that there are two things, artificial intelligence and machine learning. These two will be a part of every aspect of our lives. So that is what is called smart. Smartphone has AI and machine learning, smart homes, smart drones, smart watches, which also take your blood pressure. That is AI plus machine learning. So to become a specialist, you need to do a course in computer technology and science. But again, non-science students can pick this up online. So very, very much trending fields. Go for it if you have an interest and get extreme competency. Become a specialist. So we now move to some post-COVID careers, which will show you what I was talking about. So there are a number of post-COVID career trends. Let's have a look at it. So once again, there will be a digital transformation in all career fields. And hybrid models of real and virtual worlds will coexist. And it's already happened in our education system and you were the first to experience it. So this is alphabetical. What is trending is cyber law, genetics law, computer science, IT innovation, cyber security, customer services managers, talent managers, for which you can come from any field, but a background of management is important. Data science and analytics for people who are great at math, stats, computer science, digital media and marketing specialists, digital content creators, web series production, disaster management, environmental sciences and management, energy, ecology, sustainable development, esports, financial risk management, actuarial science, finance and tech, behavioral finance, behavioral economics, game development and design, high-end engineering technology, catch the latest, like planetary engineering, energy engineering, space technology, catch the latest. High-touch careers, very trending. All the high-touch careers, that is teachers, trainers, wellness specialists, counselors, psychologists, caregivers, the demand will grow and grow and grow. And these are some, we move to the next. Healthcare and hospital administration that we just spoke about. Hospitality, this sector had a big crash during the COVID lockdown. But what came up was cloud kitchens, which is a multi-billion dollar industry. And all hotels started offering staycations, where within the hotel, you have a wonderful time, a lot of entertainment. You don't have to go out into the city medicinal plant and organic farming. Many students from IITs, agricultural colleges, IIMs have moved into this sector because there's so much scope. So you have something called farming as a service, F-A-A-S. Pharmacists are in huge demand. There was a time when students didn't take up bachelors in pharmacy because there was very little scope. Now the maximum employability for PCB, PCM has been for pharmacists this year. Biotechnologists, space related careers like space engineering, space architecture, space psychology, space medicine, lot of scope. Serial entrepreneurship where you're an entrepreneur but you shift very quickly to the next trending field scientific research where you explore newer horizons and within design, 
user interface, user experience design, and digital art. These are all trending. And I'm sure that within this umbrella, all of you will find your passion and make your passion your profession. So as I said, 85% of specializations in the future don't exist today, just like there are specializations today that did not exist yesterday. You have culinary arts as a specialization. Earlier, it was part of hotel management, AI, robotics, game development and design, digital marketing, forensic accounting, which is all about investigative accounting, behavioral economics and finance, genetics law, cyber law, web series, all very new. So let's now look at a film to see how quickly things are changing and how if you can dream it, you can do it. So we'll watch a film and after that, we'll take up some more questions and we'll go for studies in India and abroad, which is very important for you. Good morning, Unity 22. Welcome to Spaceport. Please sign in to the astronaut logbook. The name's Branson. Sir Richard Branson. Astronaut 001. License to thrill. A deep, lifelong passion for space exploration. That's why Richard founded Virgin Galactic in 2004 with the dream of sending private citizens into space. Three, two, one, release, release, release. Clean release. Ignition. Trim complete, Unity is pointed directly up and heading to space. Things are looking great. We are 25 seconds into the burn now, approaching Mach 2. For all you kids down there, I was once a child with a dream, looking up to the stars. Now I'm an adult in a spaceship with lots of other wonderful adults looking down to a beautiful, beautiful Earth. To the next generation of dreamers, if we can do this, just imagine what you can do. Hey! <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Deep, lifelong passion. Students, it's important to not only discover your passion, but to announce it to yourself and to others. Have conviction and let your passion be your profession because that will give you sublime happiness and success and an ability to do your best for others as well. So we'll now actually move into the university arena further and then take some questions. I want to share some more statistics with you, which will give you an idea of where you are heading. So this is a summary again. We had over 3,500 responses. Have you started to explore which university you might like to attend? And I was very happy to see that 65 have said yes, 35 have said no. I think after this session, you'll be in a stronger position to explore, but you have really been proactive. Top reasons for applying for higher education were also outstanding. Job opportunities, that is very realistic. University ranking, affordability, and safety. So it's important to look at the right course at the right campus and that campus must have recognition plus be renowned for the course. Let's look at the next one now. What are your plans right after school? So 65% said that they would consider both opportunities in India and abroad. That, that is an amazing, amazing thought process. 
33% said they would prefer to study at home. And 8% said, I think 5% said they will consider uh, studying abroad. So both was the maximum, India 33%, and a small one group was very sure, 5% were very sure about studying abroad. Now the main reasons for studying in India were that a degree from my home country is just as valuable. Yes, today we have world-class institutions, absolutely world-class with amazing collaborations. I want to stay near my family, a very good reason. It's too expensive to study abroad, which it is unless you have a scholarship, very, very practical. Then what are the reasons for studying abroad? Better quality of education, better career prospects, wider exposure, more choices of courses and a flexible curriculum pathway to settle abroad. So these were some top areas, which is very, very interesting. We move on now to the right course at the right campus, India. Students very quickly, lot of opportunities in India, which will help you with your all-round development. There are also wonderful opportunities beyond your neighboring cities. So please, Think of the best in your field across the country. And having said that, also improve on your ECA and sports because ECA and sports quota will also help you to overcome the competitiveness for marks because Delhi University and others have an extracurricular activity and sports quota. I was very happy to see in the initial report how much is happening in your schools with regard to ECA and sports. So that is absolutely fascinating. Now, stats on studies abroad. What are your concerns about studying abroad? Cost of education, it's phenomenal. Availability of scholarships, job prospects, post-study, work visa, all excellent reasons. Now, what was very fascinating was your choice of destinations. So US, UK, Canada, Australia, Germany, Singapore, France, New Zealand, Netherlands, and Ireland were the top 10 in that order. And I think you have really shown the way because you have shown a great understanding of what would be ideal for you. The type of education, institutions you're looking at, both colleges and universities are maximum. Some are just looking at universities, some at colleges, and few are looking at polytechnics. I want you to know that the polytechnics in some countries are absolutely outstanding. For example, in Singapore, they lead to great jobs. Then what are your reasons uh, which are scholarships, post-study work opportunities, quality of education, reputation, etc. So this was a wonderful perspective that your responses have put forward, which will help us all to guide you better. Let's move on to studies abroad. It's very expensive. You have to do a cost-benefit analysis, look at not just capability, but copability and the placement scenario. For the placement scenario, please look at the countries where you will get a post-study work visa. So we look at the countries which will give you a post-study work visa, which are Australia, Canada, Ireland, New Zealand, United Kingdom, and USA. These are the countries which will give you the post-study work visa. We now move on to employability skills. We'll move to employability. So COVID impact is very interesting. Has COVID impacted you? So where COVID impact is concerned, 49% said no. 38 said that they decided to stay in India and some continued with studies abroad. 
a lot of students are looking for short programs at a university or college abroad, which is again a great idea. And informed decisions, parents had the list, Google search, teachers, family and friends. So this is all very, very interesting. But what I loved was, and I've come to it last purposely, which of the following are important to you when you make career choices? And I congratulate you. The best fit career for me. And I thank the association for facilitating this. And I'm very happy many of you have downloaded our app to start this journey for the best fit one, that pay package, parents recommendation, trending career fields. Parents, your impact, your support is really very valuable. So please, rather than enforcing your dreams on your child, believe in your child and promote the dreams of the children for their career aspirations. That is what will make them successful because every time anyone has achieved success in a field, the person has said, I could do this because my parents believed in me. My parents inspired me, encouraged me. And even if I didn't succeed immediately, they said, don't give up. Try, try, try till you succeed. So parents, that is your impactful role. We'll move to employability skills, which happen through co-curricular activities. There are six. Your social quotient, ability to interact with people, emotional quotient, being caring and kind and understanding, creative quotient, looking out of the box, thinking of newer ways of doing things, intelligence quotient. So if you take up courses that are going to tap your potential, your talent, your aptitude, your intelligence quotient will grow. Tech quotient, keep tracking the latest in technology and imbibing it. And finally, the foundation of all of this is your spiritual quotient. We spend so much time on internet. We neglect our inner net. So please spend time in prayer, and also find time for reflection, to be on your own. That's very, very important. So connect with your inner net through prayer and meditation. We move to stress busters, and then we'll take more questions. All of us, each one of us, have been very, very stressed during this COVID period. And we face tragedy. We have to move on in life. One thing we have learned is resilience and culpability. So I'll share with you some very, very useful stress busters. The first and most important is have unconditional positive acceptance and regard for yourself. Set reasonable expectations. Time management, plan ahead is really, really fruitful. So have a list of priorities, list down, have a to-do list, and then prioritize. Number one should be the must-dos, two, the should-dos, three, the could-dos. Could-dos can be the time gobblers. We spend so much time on the puts that we neglect the must. Keep track of your progress. Resolve the issues before they become crises. Express your feelings, seek support, and then list the solutions. Accept things beyond your control. There's lots that you can't control. You've done your best. As long as you've given your best, that is what counts. Establish parameters for saying no. Don't just take on responsibilities beyond what you can manage within the given time. Address both your positive and negative emotions. Focus on your strengths. Tackle the weaknesses. Celebrate your victories. Very important is health and self-care. Exercise, sufficient sleep, nutritious diet will boost your health. 
it'll give you resistance against diseases. It'll keep you healthy, both physically and mentally. So relax, find time for relaxation, to recharge, play games, listen to music, indulge your hobbies, meditate, and do take up creative pursuits. Practice empathy, gratitude, forgiveness. That takes you to the next level. Long time ago, the late President Abdul Kalam said, give a message from me to the students. Tell them they would have arrived in life when they are in a position to say, what can I do for you? So reach out to others with empathy and serve those who need your help. Believe in yourself and have a positive, I can attitude, I can and I will succeed. So these are some simple steps which will help you to cope with stress and really live life to the fullest and be happy and fulfilled. So finally, what is the way ahead? Anticipate and track change in an increasingly volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous world. So that has to be there, you've got to be alert. Develop a growth mindset, move beyond stereotypes and don't go by conditioned preconceived notions. Be curious, be explorers. Acquire the latest knowledge and skills, what is called in-demand knowledge and skills as lifelong learners. Presently, identify the right course at the right campus and design a unique career portfolio that will bring together the building blocks of all your talents, your interests, and what you're great at. So if you do this, you will find that you are actually just enjoying every month, every, every part of your journey. I say plan for tomorrow, but live for today. So let us prepare for and challenge the future today to lead the change and create a better tomorrow. Be in touch through our Facebook page, through our Instagram, definitely through the app. We'll keep putting the latest information for you and you can write to us. And over to you again, Father, for the questions that remain. Thank you very much. Yes, there are a few questions uh, on stress management. There's a question from an unknown student from Varanasi. Uh, she has a problem. Her parents, brother, all these uh, are abusing her. And uh, only the father supports her. She doesn't have any friend to share her feelings. And father tells her that uh, you will have to wait to finish your 12th. Then I will take you out of your home and uh, give admission in a hostel. And how shall I face this uh, situation? I would answer this first. Yeah. I'll take it question by question. This is really a very stressful situation. And I'm glad you have expressed it. You have called it out. Because had you kept it suppressed, you would have had deep emotional and psychological problems later. You already have it. So what I would suggest is, you've been very, very brave. Request your father to take you to the school counselor. That would be helpful. I would also suggest a psychologist in Delhi. You can speak to her, your father can speak to her telephonically. And uh, her name is Mrs. Dipali Batra. She's excellent. I will pass on the number to the school, but your school counselor or a counselor who is very empathetic in your city, Dipali Batra, and you can be directly in touch, your father and you, with the Institute for Career Studies. We will not charge any fees. We will ensure that you know how to cope with the present situation. And the father is able to guide you now, not later. You have to have the right guidance, the right supportive, enabling, encouragement, 
now, not after you complete your school. I'm so happy you've taken the first step. Please take the next step, reach out, reach out to the school principal. And in confidence, we will take up your case and resolve this issue. So first and foremost, reach out to the school principal or to your class teacher. Next question that we have by Arno Patel, Ambedkar Naga. We are in a new normal situation. And in this uh, COVID times, how to keep ourselves distraction-free mode? Second I love question. this. I'll take it quickly question by question. Yeah. So this is true. We are in a new normal. How do we cope? Fortunately, in most cities, the lockdown is lifted. You can move out for uh, meeting friends, but please maintain physical distance, have the mask, observe COVID protocols, move out to a playing field. You can play games and manage your time. When you're distracted, take short breaks. It's very important to study, take a short break and get back. So if you have a time planning system, I think you will be able to manage this distraction aspect. Don't sit for hours, your mind will wander. And also have some hobbies. Yoga will help you to focus. So to help you to focus, I'm recommending pranayama and yoga. These will definitely put you back on track. Next question that we have uh, from Aditi Shukla Lucknow. How to be consistent in our efforts and stay motivated in spite of being surrounded by so many distractions like mobiles and social media? That's a good question. The very fact that you have asked means you're thinking about it. So while you're studying, we recommend put your phone away. You know, don't have it near you. You will be distracted. So get away from your phone, plan your schedule, and there's a time and place for everything. So you must set targets, achieve those targets through the must, should, could approach that I mentioned. Take mind breaks, because if you sit for long hours, your mind will wander. Take some exercises daily, do yoga, do pranayama, but the biggest distraction is to study with all the social media access around you. Please put it away. And that will help you to concentrate. These were the few questions uh, that were on stress management. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, we have so many students had uh, asked several questions. We collated the questions uh, and uh, we have placed before you important ones. And you have answered uh, all the questions uh, that were asked by the students. Thank you very much. Thank you for collating and answering, asking these questions just at the right time so that there was a very logical and continuous flow of the questions. And students, please keep asking because to question is one of the best sources for knowledge and information and information is power. So it's been fantastic being with you all. I'll conclude with my favorite saying, which is you are what your deep driving desire is. What your desire is dominates your will. What your will is leads to your deeds. And what are your deeds leads to your success. So it is all about realizing who you are. You are what your deep driving desire is. That leads to the willpower, that leads to action, and that leads to success and happiness. I wish you every success and happiness in life. The end of this webinar should be the beginning of a long association and a very happy journey for the realization of your goals. Thank you again very much. Thanks to the association and its leadership for the superb organization of today's webinar. And I commit our ongoing support to you as an organization, as the Institute for Career Studies in your mission to help students realize their goals. Thank you again. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Dr. Amrita.
it was very nice and you have answered nearly all the queries of the students and i put on record my sincere thanks to father melvin as well who collated all the questions and yesterday he was searching needles in the hay stock but he managed to get the questions wonderful job father melvin thank you sir <laughs> i will request uh, mr jim thomas our zone coordinator from bareilly to propose a vote of thanks for this excellent webinar by dr amrita das over to you mr jim uh, thank you sir good afternoon everyone present in the webinar which covers of the whole region with the genetic positive outlook and endeavor uh, the grand response we have received that is because of the brand name of ics and uh, dr amrita das no doubt ready to goes to them the webinar, webinar has got only end up well but has a beautiful and enriched end the two successive webinars for our students the future of our nation is a noble idea of by the asic on decoding subjects for higher education and career choices and it was generously supported by ics and its team we had a marvelous session guiding the students when everything seemed like a mirage during the pandemic period particularly for every one of us however on on the closing note let us express our gratitude to all from top to bottom on behalf of asic i would like to extend our gratitude to our chief spokesperson dr amrita das who conducted accepted our invitation and conducted the webinar to our most needy students in such a informative way really you are doing a wonderful service to the nation thank you without end thank dr you. amrita das thank uh, you i also request you to without without any end continue with this service to the nation really you are a blessing to the future future students the program could not have been executed without the effort of our president father susai raj and the vice president mrs kalpana singh my sincere thanks to them for this successful webinar thank you father susai raj and mrs kalpana singh next i must extend my gratitude to our secretary mr sudhir joshi and joint secretary mrs manita malhotra for inspiring and encouraging for this webinar thank you mr sudhir joshi and mrs manita malhotra keep doing so i must thank the organizing team and the executive committee members who sponsored the efforts made this webinar successful thank you all executive committee members next a special and a great thanks to the principals who motivated the students working hard for the big number to attend the webinar thank you dear principals for your constant support and tireless job last and final i must thank the wonderful kids for attending the webinar with curiosity and raising lot of questions their queries that is very good the symptom that they are much concerned about their future besides that i would like to congratulate you all the students who are, who have completed their academic year without the campus without the friends and without the proper support during the pandemic period but i am sure you people are quite enough to face all these opportunities yes together we will overcome all this and we will look for a better tomorrow it will be not late very soon we will achieve that thank you once again have a good time ahead god bless all of us thank you once again over to mr sudhir josh thank you mr thank you father thank you so much and thank you everyone for your support and help throughout the webinar and finally we have accomplished it so congratulations to all the ec members and special thanks to dr amrita das and pooja ma'am who was very meticulously handling the presentations very nicely at the background thank you so much thank you again thank you thank you what i told thank you so much thank, thank you, you so much. much thank you thank you thank you, thank you dr das
Thank you. It's been Thank so you. memorable. Thank you. Very, very Have memorable. Great weekend. Thank you to all of you, and I look forward to seeing you when you are there next in Lucknow. It's so really much. been enriching for all of us. We will celebrate. We will celebrate our very successful collaboration in making these two webinars so effective and impactful. Your organization is super impressive. Thank you again. Amazing leadership. Thank Thanks you, again. Thank all you. the best. You have, and congratulations to all. Touched more than 10,000 children. Yes, alive. yes, yes. Yeah. All Thank of them. You. Were about, were they about, how many were there on YouTube? Over 3,000. Uh, 3,000 plus 3,400, 500 today. Yeah. Very nice. So we've had an audience of almost uh, 14,000 over these two. Yes. Two days. Yeah. Over yeah. these 10 to 11. Yes. Thank you, madam. <laughs> So what we'll also do is to make these videos available, which they can see later in the school as well. So we'll edit and make these videos available. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, that'd be nice. And uh, looking forward to many more such events. All the best. Look forward Thank to you. seeing you soon. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Das. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank Have you. a great weekend.